This season, there are many new changes to season four of the biggest series in the Anahuac SRL. New sponsor, new era, a new Chevy Camaro, and most importantly, a new points format. Well, not really new, but we've returned to it. Season four has arrived, and welcome to the new era cup series. We are live from Daytona International Speedway to kick off Speed Weeks in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we always start things off with our favorite preseason race, the AT&T Summer Classic. And we welcome you inside our Anawa Fasarel Studios. I'm Marty Sakala. Hope you all had a great offseason. But we're excited to be back, seeing all these cars go around the racetrack at speeds of 200 miles an hour at Daytona. In case you're new to this season, here's what you missed in the last season. Oh my goodness. Last time we had the Cup Series, it was known as the Friendly Summer Series. Chevy had the SS, and we had a playoff format. Not for just, it's not going to happen just for this season since we want to speed things up. But anyway, Steve Morgan was leading with three laps to go in the championship, and then his engine let go, giving the title to Stuart Grattan. One of the craziest, the most dramatic NLF SRL races we've had in the hi in history. And as a result, Graham went home with a championship, the first Australian driver to win a championship in the NLF SRL. Tristan Allen became our NLF SRL World Championship from season number three. He finished runner-up two times in the, in the summer series and the fall series. So some new things we got in the sport. New Era now sponsoring... Uh, the Cup Series, the official hat of the NOF SRL, made here in Buffalo, well, uh, headquartered in Buffalo, which is local to me. Uh, 22 races this season, not the usual 26. And we also have uh, playoff points are going to stay the same. No more playoff format just for this season. It'll come back for season number five. For this season, it's going to be the best driver taking it all the way. Here's the schedule we got for you today. Since today is now one, around 1 o'clock, whatever the time we have at the race at. That's the at and Summer Classic. And then at 4 o'clock, we've got Daytona 500 qualifying to see who will make the front row. Line up for the front row for the Daytona 500. Beautiful day for racing right now. Sunny at 85 degrees. However, though, at 4 o'clock, we do have a chance of thunderstorms in the vicinity. It'll, be, it'll make a huge impact for Daytona 500 qualifying should we have it. So in case you're new to the Animal Festival, once again, here's how the at t Summer Classic works. We have two races. The first one's for the new guys at Daytona in a cup car. And then the veterans are the ones you've seen in the uh, Cup Series or the Summer Series before. And they're going to put on quite the show for you today. Alrighty. I guess we're all set. With that said, let's go trackside and get the command to fire the engines for the at t Summer Classic in the Rookie Class. Twenty-three drivers in the rookie class, twenty-one in the veteran category. Quali the starting lineup was determined by a random draw. Let's give that to ya. The front row for race one of the AT&T Summer Classic. It's the number three car of Eric Monaco racing the Xbox Amateur Series last year. Now these Xbox Amateur Series drivers, they're not considered rookies this season because last season, because the Cup Summer Series times were so full, got full instantly. We had to create a new series for the guys that missed sign-up. Therefore, they're not rookies this season, but they still have to race in the at t Summer Classic rookie category. Next name is Brad Cheston in the 52, making his Anawa Fasarel debut for Rick Ware Racing, starting up in the series. Row number two, the 23 car, Carter Friesen for BK Racing. Not in his own team anymore. Instead, racing for BK Racing, which could be their last season in the Anawa Fasarel. Next to him, Ryan New in the 95, also making his NOF SRL debut. Ethan Hoffman in the 31 machine, excuse me there, pardon me. Ethan Hoffman in the 31 machine, coming up from the Xbox Amateur Series. Same with Gatlin Downey. Derek Campbell in the 37, also coming up from the Xbox Amateur Series. Same with Nathan Stapleton. Rest of the field, Wyatt Krill, Brian Webb, Sky Commons, Austin Haley, Michael Kelly. Justin Zydell, Joseph O'Neill, Alexander Russell, Sam Oskin, Adele Yepez, DJ Reed, 
um, Michael Canto, Jaden Scott, Alexander Rowe, and Griffin Lynn. As always, it is 20 laps for the AT&T Summer Classic in each race. It's going to be a good one for you today. It, there are no points on the line. It's just for fun. Everyone, though, wants to win at the end of the day. The pace car pulls in. Eric Monaco, Brad Chastain will lead the field to green. Season 4 is unofficially underway for the new Era Cup Series and the AT&T Summer Classic. Eric Monaco, Carter Friesen pushing each other off turn four, and someone's off the pace, I believe. It's the 32 of DJ Reed, I believe, may have lost a cylinder, and he's on the apron. Not a good start for the driver of the number 32 machine. That is very interesting. The back of the pack is off the pace, and we got a battle for the lead already. That's Sky Commons in the 92, a part-timer for the new, the new Ricky Ben Racing Team coming up. From the Camping World Truck Series or the Camping World Winter Series from last season. Another part-timer behind him. That's Austin Haley making his debut in the new Beard Motorsports team. Good battle for third year between Wyatt Krill and Michael Kelly. It's shocking to say that Michael Kelly is making his first ever start in a cup car. I can't believe I'm saying that though. He missed the sign-ups for the cup series back in season number three. He had to take the Xbox Amateur Series sign-ups. And now making his first start in the cup car. All the drivers racing single file for now inside the top four. We've got two packs here. The first pack, as you can see, led by Sky Commons. The second pack here in the back is led by the 20 car, Justin Zydell. Let's take a look back at the, st the start of that race. See what may have happened that caused this pack to separate. Take a look at this. They're already going four wide, and Justin Zydell got into Brian Webb. Josephine O'Neill with some damage, but my goodness, Justin Zydell, what a save for him. That is why we've got two packs right now. These drivers will have to pit, by the way, in this race. A fuel window at Daytona is between 10 to 15 laps. So that will play some very interesting strategy, but we're focusing back up front here. Wyatt Quayle is leading. Gatlin Downey currently running second. Three wide for third here. It was for third. It was uh, Sky Commons, uh, Ethan Hoffman, and Nathan Stapleton. But Stapleton stuck in that sucker hole, which you do not want to be in. Now they'll get the draft from Stapleton. Now Austin Haley is going to get slowed down by that. Gatlin Downey trying the inside here for the lead on Wyatt Quayle. Side by side coming to the line. It will be Quayle leading though. But Downey will have a good run going into turn number one here. Here comes Michael Canto on the number 19 machine. Good battle for second between Canto and Quayle. They decide to take the high side here. Cantor wants to try and go for the slingshot here. Good view from the Goodyear blimp here. He's got no help though. Diego Yapazlo has the help. Gatlin Dowdy now doesn't have help. And they're going to go three wide here into the turn here. Diego Yapaz is going to take the race lead away. And he's got help from Ryan New in the number 95. A trouble already. Michael Kelly goes around. Driver stacking up into the pit lane. Josephine O'Neill, Austin Haley, Nathan Stapleton. First caution is out. Austin Haley, about, oh, the second pack is just, oh, man. Huge crash. Sam and Oskin, Alexander Russell. Alexander Russell, the second pack just had nowhere to go. 
And we're under the first caution here at Daytona. The pace car lights are on. Brian Webb has lost the left front fender in the number nine car. We're racing them back to the line. We'll see what happened in a moment and see who got involved. The drivers will most likely come in for pit stops here. It looks like it will be Derek Hamill as they come across the star finish line. Hamill, let's see who gets second here. It's going to be Eric Monaco in the three car. Let's see who got involved in that wreck, though. Besides Brian Webb, DJ Rito involved. Justin Zydell, I think, may have missed it. Who else involved? Alexander Russell destroyed. Sam and Oskin destroyed. Ethan Hoffman done. Austin Haley, the front end, jacked up. Josephine O'Neill also involved. A big crash already to kick off the AT&T Summer Classic on, excuse me, on lap number six. These drivers will come in. They, it may come down to a fuel mileage race now because once again that fuel window between 10 to 15 laps. However, though these drivers can save gas under the caution flag. So we'll have to see what happens. By the way, Daytona International Speedway has a narrow pit road. One of the narrowest pit roads we have in the NOFSRL. I think it's maybe the narrowest we have on a super speedway. I'll let me look this up right now. See what the width of pit road is like. It's 50 feet wide. And so basically you don't have that much room for error as all the drivers are going to come down pit road. Two drivers already out. Michael Kelly and DJ Reed have decided to call it for the day. And everyone's coming in led by Derek Hamill. We'll focus on the top three. Ryan New's going to be the first one to come in in the number 95 car. The deal, obviously it's going to be gas. Let's see if they're going to do two tires or four tires or maybe none. I think they're just going to go gas and goes. Yep, that's how they're doing it. See Derek Campbell in the 37 also in pit road. He's going gas and goes as well. Comes out in front. Oh, Ryan Dude may take the lead. Battle for the lead coming out of the pits. And it is. Oh, that was a close one. It may have been Derek Campbell and it is. New Downey, Monaco, Canto, Quill, Scott, or Justin Scott, and Yepes. So the first caution is out. Let's look at the replay and see what happened. So off turn four, I think it may have been a four-wide situation. Nearly a four-wide situation. I think it may have been uh, out of the turn. This is from our original camera angle. Nathan Stapleton, I think, just gets into Michael Kelly, then into Ethan Hoffman. And then Carter Friesen trying to miss it. Stapleton and O'Neill are going to get together. They spin wildly down the grass. Wasn't really a common spot you'd see that happen last year. But this is the nervous part right here. The second pack is going to come up. There's Oskin into Kelly. Russell into O'Neill. Russell and O'Neill both go airborne. Roof flaps kept them down on the ground. Brian Webb also caught up. Austin Haley. You see DJ Reed. Ethan Hoffman. Carter Friesen just misses it in the 23 car. A lot of cars torn up. And the first caution. Let's take this in real time. Ooh, Haley just got in the back of Hoffman. I think we have an onboard from one of the drivers in that second pack. We can watch and see what happened. First onboard is from Michael Kelly in the 88. Got tagged from Stapleton. And watch this. Kablamo, Sam, and Oskin. Let's go from the tw from the nine car, Brian Webb. Now he's running last at the moment. Watch this. This is that. Oh, Alexander Russell took a huge leg, all four wheels off the ground. 
A lot of days ending there. So this wreck here involving numerous drivers brings out the first caution in the rookie race of the AT&T Summer Classic. We'll take a commercial break and then we will get back to the restart here at Daytona. Let's go places. When your battery's running low, grab a sugar-free vitamin packed five hour energy. It'll get you back to 100% fast. Five hour energy. Get back to 100%. Back here at the World Center of Racing. Underneath the first caution, two laps to go before we take the restart. A huge crash taking out many drivers in that. Here's who we're done for the day. Sam Oskin is out. Alexander Russell is out. DJ Reed, Michael Kelly, Ethan Hoffman, Josephine O'Neill, um, Alexander Rowe, Austin Haley. Brian Webb, only 14 drivers are on track. The question is, though, how many of them do not have damage? I'm probably going to take a guess here. Probably about six or seven cars do not have damage. Now, these drivers should be good to go to the end here. But I'm not sure about that. Lights are off the pace car, which means we'll have one lap to go before we get to the green. Let's take a look at the fastest laps. Of the day so far. Gatlin Downey has it with a 47.325. He is a tenth faster than the 19 of Michael Cantor with a 47.425. Want to talk about a normal trend here in the AT&T Summer Classic. In all of our races we've done this, the past two seasons, the same manufacturer has won. Back in season two, it was a pair of, four, of Chevys wasn't just that though. That was a pair of teammates. Stuart Haas Racing went to victory lane with Brian Fox and Stephanie Naylor. Then in season number three, it was all Fords. Tammy Dirk and Jonathan Logan. They were driving the number 41 and the number 21 respectively. And right now at the moment, a pair of Chevy, well you got two pairs of Chevys. They're each in the top four right now. In fact, this Camaro, let's take a look. Four Five, six, seven. I, think I, did, I know I did my math wrong. Oh yeah, that's right. I did my math wrong. Here's here's four, five, six, seven. Eight Chevys are in the top ten right now. So that's very interesting right now. And I don't think there are any store Haas drivers in this rookie category. They are all all the drivers. Are are returning for the second or more season. So we'll have 10 laps to go when we take the green flag once again here. Derek Campbell will be in control. Ryan New will run second. Gatlin Downey is third. Eric Monaco fourth. Michael Canto fifth. Wyatt Quayle sixth. Brad Cheston seventh. Jaden Scott eighth. Diego Yepaz ninth. Griffin Lynn is tenth. Justin Zydow eleventh. Carter Fries in twelfth. Sky Commons thirteenth. Nathan Stapleton fourteenth. They come to the Geico Restart Zone. We're back racing. Here is the second half of the rookie race in the Summer Classic. Downey going to make the first move here to the inside in the number 51. Couldn't get it to pay off though. Eric Monaco going to be the biggest loser. Same with Wyatt Quill. They're stuck on that high side. Don't have that big draft compared to the low line for right now. And there goes the 37, the 95, the 51, the 19. New going to look to the inside here. He's going to have Canto behind him challenging for the lead. Two by two in the first four or five rows, maybe. 
As they come off turn four, New still has the lead. Now Canto going to take a look to the inside. Five drivers on the low line, four on the high side here. It will be New in the line with nine laps to go. Canto trying to get the lead. Here goes Brad Chesson to the 52 to the inside with help from Wyatt Quayle. Quayle trying the inside here for the lead. He's stuck in the middle. Here comes Delia Paz trying to make that same move he did while trying to take the lead going into the third turn. Chester will block it, Paz. And Brad Chester now out front of Daytona. Yapaz was thinking about going to the inside. Couldn't do it there. Now Griffin Lynn will look down low. Put the block on Derek Hamill. Coming to eight laps to go. Side by side for that second position right now. Griffin Lynn, well, can he get it run to the inside? Chester will block. Is it too big of a block though? No, it's not. It's a perfect block. Three wide. I think that may be for eighth spot there. From what it was, I think Zydell. Oh, here we go. For Now they're going to go three wide for second. Hamill was looking down low. Now Canto looks down low, but Canto does not have the draft at all going into the third turn. The top two trying to break away from the pack. Lynn not going to look yet. He wants a drafting partner. There's the pack right now. He wants to try and get his teammate, the three car, Eric Monaco, up there. That way those two can work together and try and make a move for the win. But now three cars are trying to break away now. Justin, Lynn, and Canto. Canto looks to the inside for second. He's got no help though. Lynn and Justin got go on the high side here. Monaco wants to try and get a draft here off of Canto, can't do it there. Now top five breakaway. They're all single file. Best battle for six is Zydell and Downey. Are these drivers going to look? Are they going to wait? They're going to wait to make the move. They come to six laps to go. That's five, four Chevys in that top five. A Toyota stuck in the middle. Canto wants the inside. Is it going to work? He goes for second. News going to look for fourth. Canto takes second away. Ryan New now third. Down the back stretch. Monaco takes a look. Three wide for third. Monaco is going to advance. Here comes Gatlin Downey. That's, by the way, that's Cheston's teammate in the number 51 here. Cheston continues to lead. Coming to four, five laps to go. Now, if we do get the caution flag, we still have the overtime rule and effect. As Canto looks to the inside for the lead, both drivers do not have the draft. This is what Canto wants in to go into the turn. And he's going to get some help from Eric Monaco, Michael Canto, out front of the number 19. Monaco, Downey, try the bottom. Downey goes to the inside. Monaco stuck in the middle. Do trying to switch from the high to the low side. Canto will put the block on Downey. I'll turn four. Four laps to go coming to the line as Downey and Monaco battle for the second position. I know someone's at my door, by the way. Oh, UPS is here. Never mind that. We're going to focus on the race, though. They're going to have a good battle for third right now. Here comes Dio Yapaz and Derek Hamill working together. Try to spoil the party with four to go. Canto is liking what he's seeing. They are three by three for third on back. Monaco trying to find the perfect lane to work with. Remember, Canto does not have the draft, but he has the low line. And here comes Derek Hamill in that 37 car looking for second with three to go. Battling for second. Going through the tri-oval. 
Here comes Griffin Lane with help from Carter Friesen. I think Friesen may have been involved in that first accident we had, and he's battling for the win at Daytona. Out of turn two, Lynn trying to find the run. This is a brand new car this season. The number A, the first time we've seen the A car in the Cup Series. In the turn three, and he's got his RCR teammate behind him. Cantor trying to block. Lynn and Monaco are going to go to the outside here. Is it going to pay off? Not just yet. They are trying to get it to work. But it's not working at all. They come to two laps to go. At the World Center of Racing, Hamill and Lynn battle for second. Lynn trying to get a huge run on the high side. He tried to get there. Kanto puts a big block on Lynn. Here goes Derek Campbell to the inside. Takes a second spot away. Monaco goes to the inside. Leaving Griffin Lynn out of this one. Bye bye Griffin. Hamill and Monaco trying to battle it out for the second position. Hamill blocks Monaco as they come late to turn number four. This time by, it will be the white flag with one to go in the rookie race of the AT&T Summer Classic. Will Michael Cantor be able to hold off all these drivers? Or will Derek Hamill or Eric Monaco spoil this party for Canto? In the turn, Hamill's not looking. He wants to make his move at the right place at the right time. Top three, single file. Delia Pez up there running in fourth position. Getting the draft off of Eric Monaco. Out of turn two. Yepez wants to look. Is this what Monaco wants or Hamill wants? Monaco tried it. Hamill trying to get there. Here we go. Derek Hamill to the inside. Michael Canto on the outside. Derek Hamill trying to make the last lap pass in turn four. Derek Hamill, he's got the lead. Help from Diego Yepez. Out of turn number four. What a move he's going to make. Derek Hamill, the rookie winner of the AT&T Summer Classic. A thrilling race at the end, and Derek Hamill pulls off the last lap pass. Sky Commons and Nathan Stapleton just finishing up their races. But it is Derek Hamill winning today's AT&T Summer Classic in the rookie category. And look at that. The second, the battle for second is a tie. Wow, 68 thousandths of a second. Whoo! Man, imagine if that was for the win. That would have been the closest finish in Anilaf Fasserau history right there. Man. A great battle to the end. Derek Camel will pick up the win. Michael Canto second. Dio Yepes third. Eric Monaco fourth. Carter Friesen fifth. Gatlin Downey sixth. Wyatt Quayle seventh. Ryan New eighth. Brad Cheston was ninth. And Griffin Lynn rounds out the top ten. All right. These drivers are going to pack up. We'll talk with race winner Derek Hamill. And when we come back, it will also be race number two. Oh, the veterans are showing up. Hello? Dale. What's up? It's Dewey. You know you're dead last, right? Race isn't over yet. Where's my stuck guy? Leon, you're in. Don't embarrass us. Good luck, Leon. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. All night. All day. All in. All you need is an engine and Sunoco fuel. Like the pine trees lining the winding road. I've got a name. I've got a name. And I carry it with me like my daddy did. But I'm living the dream that he kept here. Moving me down the highway. Those who live up to their names, make one for themselves. Goodyear, more driven. And we are back ready to go for race number two of the AT&T Summer Classic. 21 drivers that have raced in this series before are going to take the green flag for this one. All right, we're all set to go. Let's go track side here as the command. Do 
Drivers, start your engine! 21 drivers, fire it up once again. The starting line is determined by a random draw, and here's how it looks today. Jay Jefferson in the same ride from last season finished third in the championship standings. Next to him is Jeff Cole back from season number two when he was part time of the 13, part time of the new number 99 Starcom Camaro. Row two, it is the 41. Cody Smart did not like the 17 the past two years, has made the switch to Stuart Haas Racing. And Kenny Sterling, the 55, always a low tier driver in the Cup Series. Row three, a pair of teammates from Penske Racing. Number 12 of Marty Johnson, the brand new car, back for the first time in and for the first time this season. Next to him, the 22, Johnny Garner, the custom 22, Miller Fusion. Row for William Brock, back for the first time since season two when he drove in the number one car. Waiting, and next to him, that's the 96, Jake Rogers in a Toyota once again, but this, or 15, excuse me, Aiden Shepard. The number 15 for the first time since season two. Grant Stover, Southern 500 winner last year, back for the first, Back once again for his second season. Jake Rogers next to him in another Toyota for 96. Then Steve Morgan had a night at the heartbreak for Morgan last year, three laps away from winning the championship. Lost it. Teammates Cole Baker, last year's champion Stuart Grant. Then it's Julio Caesar, John Andrews, Zachary Fitzwater, last year's race two winner, Jonathan Logan, Colin Denton, last year's Daytona 500 winner. Tristan Allen, last year's world champion, and Elijah Gordon round out the field of 21. Once again, 20 laps around the Daytona International Speedway. These guys are more experienced. How will it pay off? We're about to find out. Pace car is going to pull in. It's going to be Jay Jefferson and Seth Cole bringing the field to the green flag. Race number two of the AT&T Summer Classic for the experienced drivers is green. Marty Johnson tried the inside on Jay Jefferson. It's going to be Jefferson in the late lap one. William Brock inside, three wide for the race lead. Brad Stover makes his shift from the low to the middle side. Trying to work for the driver of the number 12, but it's not going to pay off. William Brock, new leader at Daytona. Here comes Steve Morgan, the 13 car, battling for second. Everyone else, three deep in the field. Luckily, no drivers getting way loose on lap one. Let's see how long it's going to take until, the, until they may wreck. Who knows? They could not wreck. I don't know, though. Three wide for the lead. Here comes Edwin Mendez to the inside. Help from Cole Baker. And it's going to be Mendez taking the lead in the number four. Same ride from last season and same ride from season number one. It's Mendez out front. And watch out! Jonathan Logan, Zachary Fitzwater. Get a little wild. They're playing some aggressive games. They save it, though. Keep the cars going. Already being and banging Fitzy and Logan. Three wide for the lead. It's Julio Caesar in the 17 on the inside. With help from Colin Denson in the number 34. Two fours laying the inside line. Behind Denson, it's Elijah Gordon. Elijah with the shock, most shocking, the silly season decision of last year. Leaving the 31 car after two seasons going to the 72. Tristan Allen taking a look at, at third on Elijah Gordon. And Tristan will take that away. Last year's champion, Stuart Grant, up to fourth, and Zachary Fitzwater has made his way back up into fifth position. Caesar will lead lap three. Grant, by the way, he's got a visor cam for today. Let's take a look at what he sees here as he battles Denton for second spot.
Denton, by the way, is carrying advisor cam for us as well. Got a good run here on Julio Cesar. Let's see if he makes it to the inside. Here he goes for the race lead. It's Stuart Grant into turn number three. Grant's going to take the race lead away here. Here comes Seth Cole in the 99 looking for a second spot on the inside line here. Three wide for second and for fifth. Everyone else is too deep. John Andrews looking at the inside spot for that second position. Andrews may look for the lead right here. Here he goes. Help from Aiden Shepard. It's John Andrews to the point at Daytona. Teammates from Premium Motorsports. Two of the three premium cars entered this season. Aiden Shepard, Kenny Stremme working together. Stremme looking to the inside on teammate Shepard for second. Shepard thought about looking to the inside. I think Stremme may have been there. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think he was. Here comes Cody Smart in the 41, trying to get the third position away. Help from Jonathan Logan in the 21 car. Top two, though, looking like they're going to have they have a car length lead over third place Smart. And they're going to work together. Jonathan Logan looking for the third spot here. Three wide. Shepard looks to the inside for the race lead. Meanwhile, I think they're four deep. Four wide, baby. Maybe. Nope, they're not. That they were. Aiden Shepard takes the lead away. Let's see if Andrews can get the draft. But Jonathan Logan is to the inside with a Penske affiliate. A Penske affiliate. And Marty Johnson just behind him in the number 12 car. Johnson going to get stuck in the middle there from Steve Morgan in the 13 car. What else did you get me? Is that mud? Yeah, that's got to be mud. That must be the stuff that it's lying Oh, okay. Sorry about that. John Andrews looks back to the inside on Aiden Shepard, trying to take the race lead away once again. Andrews takes it. Here comes Edwin Mendez in the four car. He's going to get the draft off of Andrews. And Brad Stover trying to push him. Stover trying to go all by himself to the inside with help from two Toyotas of Jefferson and Brock. They're stacking up in the back of the pack, though. That pack got separated just a little bit. They were three deep coming to the line last time. Now they stacked up just a little bit. I think they got it back together here. Here goes Stover to the inside. Trying to take the lead away. He's got no help, though. Andrews has help from teammate Jarvison from Joe Gibbs Racing. Stover and Andrews side by side. Four more teammates from last season. As Elijah Gordon, who started last in this race, has made his way up to the second spot. And around goes Julio Caesar in the 17. He got tagged for the two of Tristan Allen. And will this bring out a caution flag? No, it won't. We will stay green. But Tristan Allen and Colin Denton have fallen out. If you're Julio Caesar, you better pit for four tires right now because you could have a chance to get back under that pack. So Caesar gets turned, we stay green. It's Marty Johnson out front, and he's got teammate Johnny Gardner behind him in the 22. Stuart Grant runs in third. Now Gardner looks underneath, and then you got the Aussies running, battling for third. Fitzwater and Grattan. Gardy takes the lead away. Caesar is not going to come in. I don't know why he wouldn't come in. Go for four tires. Go for gas. You know, it would be a perfect chance for you to try and get back up front and win this race. Because you're pitting early, but you won't have the draft, though. That's the thing. Jonathan Logan takes it three wide to the bottom, taking the second spot away. Kenny Strummy has gone to third. Seth Cole trying to get fourth away from Zachary Fitzwater. And now we are approaching that pit window. When will these drivers come in? For gas, because you can't make it on gas for 20 laps. Between laps 10 and 15, they'll have to come in. Some of these drivers may want to caution if they want to keep this pack going. Strami playing a big block on Seth Cole for right now. Here comes Jake Rogers in the number 96. Rogers to the inside, trying to get the second spot away. Rogers stuck in the middle. Here comes Steve Morgan in the number 13 car.
Morgan takes second. Elijah Gordon goes up to third. Johnny Gardner, remember in the last race of the NOFS World Out World Championship, Gardner took the lead for the most for the all time for the lead on the all time wins list with his eleventh career win. He's got about a two car length lead right now on Elijah Gordon. Gordon is second. Cole Baker runs third. Baker looks to the inside. Shepard is pushing him. Now Shepard takes it three wide for third position. Cody Smart pushing him. Shepard down low. Top two now all single file. Top three. Now it's top four. Now who comes in? Any, any takers this time? No one comes in. Top four single file. They're going to play it safe. They don't want to be aggressive now, especially when they come down pit road. Because back in NASCAR, we've seen Rex before entering pit road. Oh, Elijah Gordon! Shepard was looking to the inside. Gordon. Gordon puts a huge block, and Elijah Gordon takes the lead. Remember, he's got two wins here at Daytona, and he sw and they were both came from the Menard Series. He swept last season thanks to lap traffic, by the way. We'll say that as well. But now Aiden Shepard looks down low. Brad Stover looks down low. Three wide into the turn for the race lead. Stover takes it to the point. Mendez and Fitzwater are helping each other out. Stover goes to the middle line. That help opens up the door for Edwin Mendez to the inside with seven laps to go. Or eight to go, excuse me. Three by three in the pack. Mendez takes the lead. Teammate Fitzwater second. Marty Johnson trying to take third spot away. John Andrews now goes to fourth with a fellow Toyota of William Brock behind him. Fitzwater and Johnson try the inside here for the lead. Johnson decides to stay back up high, work with Mendez. Fitzy down low. Andrew's trying to get behind him, and Fitzwater's going to go back out front. Andrews is going to go to the inside here, go for the race lead. William Brock behind him. Andrews, Fitzwater side by side, going through the tri oval. Brock now up to second. Steve Morgan goes to third. And Seth Cole runs fourth in the 99. Top three go up high now. Morgan wants to work with Brock. Morgan's going to stay back in line here. Cole goes for second. Brock stuck in the middle line. Here comes Stuart Grant in the one car. Colin Denton up there in the 34. Almost got involved in that spin with Julio Caesar. And here they all come down pit road. Denton and Jefferson are going to be the first takers this time. So they will work together. They could have a good chance at winning this race as they are the first takers to go down pit road for gas. Now this stacked up the pack just a little bit because they came in. Now we have two packs. This pack now led by Kenny Stremme. Did anyone else come down pit road? Tristan Allen and Julio Caesar are going to come down pit road. Colin Denton is out of pit road now. Let's see if Jay Jefferson will come out at about the same time here. Yes, he will. Let's see who comes in next as we come to five laps to go. A lot more takers this time. About five, eight cars actually. Make it nine now coming in. Led by Stuart Grant in the one car. Five to go. Now if a caution comes out, we'll go to overtime. Top six right now that are in the lead pack have not pitted just yet. Now these drivers are exiting pit road and Steve Morgan looks to the inside. Let's see what happens if you're Jay Jefferson. How will you merge up the track? Stays committed to the low line. Morgan almost makes contact with them. Remember, he's not up to speed just yet. Slows down that 14 car of Fitzwater. Now, if you're Fitzy, come in now. Like, seriously. Come in now. They're all coming in. 
Now we have to watch that 34 car Colin Denton closely. He doesn't have the draft though. Everyone else does. As he's trying to make his way up. Grant has just exited pit road. Julio Caesar may be leading this race. I'm not too sure though. As they come to three laps to go. I don't know who's leading. Caesar was across 21st. So he's back on the lead lap. Colin Dent. Oh, Anders was in the grass. Anders is in the grass. Something happened on his pit road exit. That'll be interesting how race control calls that. And he merged in properly. He's back on the racetrack. He may get a penalty for that. Here comes Stuart Grant. He's going for the race lead here. And the number one came out ahead of Colin Denton. So the battle is now on Stuart Grant and John Andrews. But the question is, will race control black flag John Andrews? Let's look at the replay real quick. But Grant's got a huge run of steam. Stuart Grant takes the race lead away. So let's see what happened with Andrews. How did that happen on his pit road exit? He's got the last pit stall. Oh, he just messes up. That was not from contact. He's coming in once again. That's right. He just got the black flag. And Stuart Graham leads this race with three laps to go. He's got a huge lead right now. 2.93 over Colin Denton. Jay Jefferson runs in third. That is what happens when you are the first ones to come in. Now he's not running as fast as De now the top three. They're not running as fast as this pack right here, led by Steve Morgan. They are going to need a caution flag if they want to get up front and win this race. And once and if and if we stay green, this will be a Chevrolet sweep for the second year or no. It won't be for the second year in a row for the second time in the Summer Classic. As the pack has caught up to Jay Jefferson. As we come to two laps to go, they battle it out right now for fourth. Still about the same gap right now for Grant and Denton. Johnson tries to get to the inside here for the third spot with help from Fitzwater. But they need a caution, like, right now. Like, literally. A caution flag has to come out. Andrews comes back down pit road. I think he messed up once again. What a heartbreaker for John Andrews. Was doing so good all day. And then it, and that pit exit just killed him. Now it's going for a stopping goal here. If not, it's like a 15 second hold here. But Stuart Grant will see the white flag with one lap to go. Now will this pack catch up to Colin Denton is the question. It goes from 6.83 down to 5.33. I don't think they're going to catch him. Yeah, there's Denton. They're not going to catch him. They're not going to catch Graham. Unless Graham blows up, it would be just like Season 3 in the championship race. But Stuart Graham plays his pit strategy well out in front and is going to win Race 2 of the AT&T Summer Classic. If, if Julio Caesar's spin transformed into a caution flag, it would have affected the entire outcome, but it did not. And Stuart Graham, Season 3 champion, Season 4 AT&T Summer Classic winner in the veteran class. Denton will come home second. They were three wide for third, and Fitzwater edges out Marty Johnson. We just have to wait for the 17 car to finish up. John Andrews will finish last though, two laps down. I don't know if he's in pit road or not. Oh, he's in pit road. I think he may have just he may have just called it for the day. He's just mad at what happened. It's like his steering locked up or something. But Julio Caesar finishes the race now. Let's watch and see what happened with the 17 car uh, that caused the spin to happen.
So I think Caesar tries to cut down to the inside. Yeah, he does. And Tristan Allen just gets into him. Oh no, Caesar I think may have just gotten into Cody Smart and sent the 17 car around. Because he was on the apron. We stayed green. Let's see what Tristan on Tristan's on board showed us. Nope, Smart just got into Caesar. Or Caesar just got into Smart. Nothing Tristan Allen could do about it. He just got slowed down by it. He had to slow down for it. So there's your race winner. Stuart Grattan takes home the checkered flag today. Let's look at the rest of the race results here. So Grand wins, Colin Denton second, Zachary Fitzwater third, Marty Johnson fourth, Jay Jefferson fifth, Steve Morgan sixth, Seth Cole was, or seventh was Steve Morgan, Aiden Shepard was sixth, Seth Cole was eighth, Brad Stover was ninth, and Cody Smart round, rounds out top ten. So we will be right back, or well, we won't be back, we may be back, to talk with Stuart Grand. um... So yeah, uh, just stay with us everyone. If not, uh, I'm Mario Sakella. You've been watching the NOFX Real New Era Cup Series 18T Summer Classic. Don't forget 4 o'clock later today is Daytona 5 Summer Qualifying. Weather will be in question. But yeah, uh, see you guys then.